Hi, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to Pace Yourself. Today, we're going to be talking about how to create a flow that has a loop in it to action something after it goes through the loop. So what we're going to be talking about is this contact has the related accounts. So this org has multiple accounts allowed to one contact activated. And so what we use case is we wanted to look through all the accounts this contact is related to and t tick a box back on their contact record if they find that one of their accounts is in the industry education. This is just a use case. Obviously, you can use it for various options. So what we had to do is just create that checkbox on that contact profile. So what we're going to call it is, is related to education account. And then we're going to dive into our flow. So we're going to go into flows, add new flow. This flow is going to be a record triggered flow to look through if something has been updated or not. You can also do it by scheduled flow, depending on what your use case is, if it changes very often or if it doesn't get updated, but the related list changes. So we're going to click record triggered flow. So the object that starts this flow interview is going to be our contact. And we want to do it when they're updated or created. Currently, there are no conditions. I'm going to leave it as actions and related records. So our first step is, so Andy's contact page has been updated. And we want to look through all of his related accounts to see if he's in education industry. So what we first have to do is get all those accounts. So we know who started the interview. Now we're going to get records. And the object I'm looking for is the account contact relationships object. Now the conditions for this will actually be that the contact for Andy, the contact ID for Andy, relates to the same contact ID as the account. And what I want to do is I don't want to stop at the first record we find. I want to make sure we find all the related accounts and we look at them in our loop. And we're going to click done. Next best practice is every time you get a get records element is to look to see if you actually found any records. So I'm just going to quickly Add a decision element to see if that's the case. So we're going to say, have a look in that get records element and is it null? And it's not null. So we're going to say false. And that means that we did find records. The default outcome is the opposite. So we've quickly added that decision element. So because accounts were not found, we're not going to continue any of the actions. And I'm going to quickly end the flow on that side of the element. But on this side of the element, I'm going to add our loop. And what am I looking through for our loop? And this is our record collection variable. So all of those get records we just got, this is what I want you to loop through. Okay, so now we've started our loop. So you can see here it says for each, it means for each record it finds and then continues this after the last one it's finished. So in here, we're gonna add our decision. So we're gonna say that this did find education, but how do we know that? So we're gonna say, for the current item in this loop. And then we click through to it, we get almost what you got in Pr Process Builder, which was you can then go through the account objects link. And when I'm in the account objects link, I can look for the industry, which is the field that stores the fact that they're an education industry. That's a pick list field. I'm gonna leave it as equals, and then it represents the pick list fields for me to choose from going to go ahead and find education. And then our default outcome, I can change to not non-education. So that means that if the decision is finds an education industry, it'll go down this path. If it doesn't, it'll go down this path. But what do we do with that information? So I'm going to actually collect that information because you can't update a record inside a flow. 
So you're going to make sure you do that outside the float. So this one has found a record with the industry education, but I can't go ahead and update that record now to reflect that we found it. Always save your update records until after the flow has finished its last record. But how are we going to know if someone was found? So I'm going to add the assignment element here to just tell us later on whether we found one. But how am I going to record that? And the simplest thing is, I know it's either one or two. It's found one or it hasn't found one. And a resource like that, to me, sounds like a checkbox. But it's going to be a variable one. So it's going to be updated depending on what record it sees. I'm going to call it a Boolean. I'm going to have it available for input. Default is also false. So the variable means that I want to action this checkbox to have the value of true. So I've said, have you found an education account? If you have, tick a box that I've created in the flow as a resource and then continue on your merry way. Reach the next record. Have you found an education? No, I haven't. Don't assign anything because I didn't put that element on this side and continue on the loop. So after everything has been looped through, so we had six probably records to loop through, that's when we're going to say what we want to do with that information. So it's just going to be another quick decision to see if this assignment is checked or is not checked. So how am I going to know if it was checked? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open into my resources. Now the assignment was where we're collecting the information. So that's not it. It's not the decisions because we were talking through it. It's our variable here. So it can change relative on that record. So we know it's a Boolean value and we equals true. And so not checked means the opposite. So if it's checked, this is when we get to do the all exciting update trigger record. So update triggering record, meaning Andy that started this flow because his contact record was updated. Now we get to come back around and update his particular record. And so what field we're updating is related to education account. I'm going to fill the value as the global constant true. And go ahead and click done. If you were updating anything else on the record, this is, you can just add fields and add them to the bottom. So now we have done that. Just going to go ahead and save where we are. So now we've saved it, we get to debug it. So let me check on Andy's record. So we've got the Andy's records related accounts. We can see that one of them is an education account. So let's go ahead and test debug our flow using his contact. So you can see here, we've gone through the side that we need. We've looped through his account objects. We have found out that we do have a education contact and we've ticked that box. All on your side here, you can see every single loop assignment and then update records finally at the end. This ran in rollback mode, so it doesn't update the record in Salesforce. But let me see the opposite. Let me remove this relationship to that one account that had education. Now let's debug again. Still Andy. Running on the update function. Going to click. And we can see here that it never entered that left-hand side of the loop flow because it never found a related account that had education in its industry. And so it never did tick that box on our contact profile. So that's how you can use loop in flow. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave any comments or any questions or suggestions about any other videos you'd like to see. Thank you for tuning in. This is Mia Pacey with Pace Yourself.